Every morning I wake Julia up with this wonderful machine. Now usually I put a towel over it to deaden the sound. And that works pretty well, but it's a little cumbersome and I like to build stuff on this channel. So I'm gonna make a silencer for this thing. So I think there's two sources to the sound here. Obviously we have the grinder up top, but a not so obvious source is from the vibration down through the countertop. I think at least some of the sound could be eliminated by lifting this up and isolating the grinder from the countertop. I borrowed this decibel meter from work, so let's do a test and see how much quieter the towel actually makes it. First, let's get a baseline. So this is all natural, no suppression. Here we go. Next, let's next let's do a towel under the base to isolate it from the countertop. About 78. And finally, we'll just cover it up with the base isolated. See total suppression. How? What does that do? 79. 80. Maybe I'm too close to it. Maybe I should maybe I should do it from like further away. About 70 from back here. About 73. About 75. All right. Apologies to your eardrums. That's enough coffee grinding for this episode. Let's see if we can make a box that reduces more than the 5 decibels we were getting from the towel. This thing is going to have to fit the grinder, which is about 13 and 3 quarter by 6 and 3 quarter by 5 inches. Let's add another inch on either side and on top to allow for some sound deadening foam. And if I'm using 3 quarter inch plywood, this thing will end up about 15 and 3 quarters by 9 and a quarter by 7 and a half. I'm going to need to access the hopper on top, so we're going to need a hinged lid here that swings open. I'm also going to have to access the front to get the ground coffee, so we need a hinge door on the front as well. And that'll need a handle, of course. Going to have to cut a hole in the back for the power cord. The trickiest part is probably going to be turning it on and off from the outside, so I'm thinking a knob on this side here that connects to the on-off switch. Alright, let's get some wood. Now, I live in Brooklyn, so I don't have space for my own shop, so I have to rent time at this wood shop in Gowanus. Shout out to Makeville Studio, it's a great space. Alright, with everything cut, now we can get assembling. I'm thinking about how I want to locate the hole for the control knob. These vibration dampening feet are going to raise it up just a little bit, so I'll put those on first, and then put a little ink right at the center of the control knob, press it into the wood, and it should leave a little mark right where I need to drill. Taking a quick trip to the lathe now to machine the shaft for the control knob. It'll be super simple, 3 8 diameter for most of it with one end at quarter inch to fit into the outer knob.
Thank you to Van Neistat for this power cable door idea. I just wish they made these hinges in steel instead of brass to match the other hardware. It was surprisingly difficult to figure out the most aesthetically pleasing position for the door handle, but I think it ended up in the right spot. These little magnets really did not go according to plan. I had a tough time getting them in and then I mounted the strike plates in the wrong spot. After all that, they didn't even hold the lid down, so I guess they're just going to have to be decorative. It's looking pretty good. I just want to hit it with some tongue oil. I really like this stuff. It's food safe and it makes the color and the end grain pop, which is why I love plywood. I'm just going to leave it out to dry for a bit and here's a quick before and after. Moment of truth. At 67. So, it's definitely an improvement. Remember, with the meter up close and no suppression, we were seeing about 84 decibels. The towel brought it down to 79 or 80, and the box brings it all the way down to 67 or 68. But none of that really matters unless Julia wakes up. So let's see if it passes the final test. Sleep. How'd you sleep?